And thank you everyone for joining us on our season finale on this uh, series of na navigating our future and embracing the new wellness lifestyle. So uh, today I have very three seasoned speakers with me, great leaders and communicators in their own field. Uh, over in IES, we have Zola. Welcome Zola. Uh, oh, welcome thank back. you. And uh, we also have uh, the beautiful, the strong, uh, talented uh, Inda. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, last but not least, I think uh, you, you've all seen our very own founder and uh, managing director, Anthony. The past few weeks today, he's taking a different role and joining us as a speaker. Thank you, Alex. And I'll be very delighted to share with you personal branding on my good experience. Uh, and I would like to also thank all our viewers and our speaker, Sola Inda, thank you for joining us. Alex, thank you for taking my role there for moderating today's event. You are most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wasn't given a choice, but anyway, I, I'm enjoying it. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we this series was actually brought together with uh, Swan Corporation, our main sponsor, uh, whom we worked on previous episodes with as you've been through this journey with us on wellness, architecture. And to close off this whole series, we thought it would be quite beautiful to end with uh, something on how to brand yourself. So personal branding and excelling in uh, marketing amid this, you know, tough times. So these speakers today, I have the first one on hand, Inda. I'll read um, your, your bio if you would let me. Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> so Inda is a communications expert, a network communicator and business developer at SmartSoft Asia, a software development company based in Bangkok as well as Paris. She's also a very, very, and I attested that, outgoing president of a Bangkok Advanced Toastmasters Club, a renowned communications and public speaking club in Bangkok. Welcome, Inda, and uh, yeah, Thank break you. a leg. Thank you. Thank you for, for inviting me and uh, thank you for giving me the, the opportunity to share my experience on personal branding. So my name is Inda and I am a business developer for Smarts of Asia and I cannot not start this talk by not by talking about my story. Next slide please. Yeah, because we are talking about personal branding, right? So what is my story? My story is that of an unconventional business developer. Originally, I'm a business developer. But in 2015, 2016, I decided I wanted to become an awesome business, business developer in the tech business. And I decided to do what I call reversed business development. And what does, what does that mean? Reversed business development means that I chose to tackle the technical and the people side for me to learn about the business in the tech in order to, to be a better business developer in communication and personal branding. Acquiring the skills in technical meant that I took an intensive course in programming and I became an Android developer. Not the kind of Android developer that you would see the engineer starting already from one day the kid. But, but I got there, I got there. I became a junior Android developer and Philip, our MD, hired me at Smart of Asia to actually, to, as an intern in the company. The second aspect was for me to learn public speaking and leadership, right? The, the people skills. So me learning to become a programmer and also a public speaker allowed me to actually learn personal branding through communication and to become a kind of business developer on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide, please. Okay, we are talking about uh, personal branding here. My story matters, but alone, it doesn't matter much. How does this relate to the story of the company I work for at Smarts of Asia? 
the transformation that I told you about, the reverse business development transformation is not free, right? It's something that I could do because Philip, our MD, the founder of Smart of Asia has actually invested in that transformation. And it all started so with Philip that you see on the left huh, from Belgium. It's somebody that I met in 2006 when I came from France to Thailand to do an internship in an IT security company as, a, as an intern in sales and marketing. At that time, what Philip was doing, he was a lead developer in that company. He was 26 and I was 24, we we're still kids. And I still remember me going up to the 12th floor where only the developers were because you know they need special uh, quietness. <laughs> 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 and we just mess around together and 10 years down the road, I would never have thought that this person would become my, actually my boss today. And I think that Philip really was really lucky. I mean, lucky to be surrounded by, by a great team of developers, but also lucky to meet that person on the right. His, mark is, his name is Marc Aguilar. He's half French, half English. And at that time, Marc was the customer, was the customer of this IT security company. And he had, he was the owner of a, of a food delivery company called Food by Phone. Those of you who have been in Thailand for, for 10 years would, would uh, remember this company. Mark had asked Philip to develop the first food delivery platform in Thailand. And Philip took such great pleasure and pride in doing it that the platform has become successful right away. And Food by Phone got bought by Food Panda in 2015. Uh, to capture the time market. So Philip had built this indispensable tool that we take today for granted, huh? right? We order our, our food at one click. In 2006, you had to call to order your, your food on the phone. So these two people met and they clicked right away. A friendship was born. So the first dream, Philip had this dream, and his dream was that he wanted to replicate what he did for other customers. So he wanted to turn ideas into indispensable products. And Mark too. <laughs> so this, this is the reason, you see, um, the reason why I've been staying in the, at Smart of Asia since 2000, 2016 now, is because in that tech, in this tech company, uh, Philip knows the science of people. He understands what the staff wants, what the, what the customers wants. And that is the reason why I stay and everyone else, and everyone else stay. So we have evolved, right? At first, he was a little bit naive, right? He was a little bit naive. He wanted to turn ideas into indispensable products. But as we went through the pain, actually the pain of project management in software, he figured, that the mission today is actually to turn projects into products that work as planned. So that is the, that is the, the story of SmartSoft Asia and how it relates to my story. Now let's go, let's go to, to the heart of the problem here, to the marketing problem. What is the problem today? With marketing, yeah, there is too much information. Do, no. Go back to the, yeah. There is way too much information. Uh, advertising is not marketing. There is so much, uh, so much advertising and the world has become, yes, a garbage of information. Our attention span has become shorter and shorter. So there is this silent contract between, between us and your, your audience. And the contract is this, you give me value and I trust to give you my attention. The purpose of the talk today, we are going to go briefly to that, is how do you package yourself and your business to sell your brand? In other words, how do you use your own person to create a connection with your targeted audience and to raise awareness and credibility and trust, right? And trigger a sell. The first thing you need to do is to really uh, leverage your golden triangle. I call it golden triangle. 
you need to keep the balance between these three things to build your credibility and your trust, to deliver seminars, things like that, to develop your emotions, Im uh, your imagination and emotion, and to develop your knowledge with the logos. And the most hard, the, the hardest part uh, to do is, um, is to overcome your fears. In personal branding, you need to dare to speak, post, ask, and create. And not believe the internal story that you are telling yourself. You need also to tell yourself a good story. Running yourself is a game against yourself first. That is the foundation. The three things you need to do, the first is identify your narrative, build your platform, send, and bend the trend. So when I say build your narrative, what does this mean? You need to identify what are your own values, not the company, your own values, but also your company's values. You need to make them match. Identify your key skills, but also your message. What is the message that you are sending personally? Also matching with the message of the company. What is your story and your company's story, but also what is your vision and your company's vision? The second thing is know your audience. Not everyone is going to resonate with your message. You need to talk to the people who want to hear you. Also, if you want to engage in personal branding, you will be the center of attention. And so you, learn, you need to learn to speak, read and write. That means learn how to articulate your ideas, exactly what you mean. That is also one advice that I recommend. Be the one-liner that you can pull off anytime because as a personal brander, you are probably going to go on networking events, for example, and lots of people will ask what you are doing. So the one-liner is three steps. You expose the problem, introduce the solution, and ensure there is a happy ending. Let me show you an example. This is what we do at Smart of Asia. Okay, so our audience here, IT manager, CTO, the problem is, we understand you don't want to go to the to messy project management, increased budgets, and endless timelines. The solution, we have hired an a plus team of agile developers and project managers qualified to contain your projects with quality on time and on budget. And the happy ending, so you know you can sleep on both ears at night, your job is safe. The other advice, you don't need to be good at everything, but find your medium through which you will convey your story and learn to master it. Build communities across the platform, optimize your content on different platforms and build community. That means be relevant, bring new insights, be consistent, be consistent you, you need to be consistent with, your, with yourself and the company. Be regular, be frequent. I respect very much this person. In, uh, he's a marketing group. I respect him very much and oh, I agree yeah. with this. Marketing is a contest for people's attention. So get your story straight and stand out. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, and That was great. I have a You're few welcome. questions lined up, but... Um, We'll wait till the end of it. Sure. So um, thank, thank you, you so much. Good. Yeah, really good. Um, just before we head, head into uh, Zola's presentation, some housekeeping matters. Uh, we encourage everyone to share their questions through the Q&A function located at the bottom of your screen. Please, please, please do ask any questions you may have, as silly as it may sound. Mm. It's still a question, and our speakers are always happy no to answer that. Yeah, no stupid questions, really. Um, so, as I would like to bring on board now, uh, our really great educational speaker with lots of past experience, we have Zola Kriyako. So, Zola is uh, currently the co-founder and president of the International Executive School, a business school established in France. She has worked in both Lebanon and UAE for more than 10 years with great experience in multinational companies like PNG and Nestle, which has built a capacity of cross-cultural management. Thank you, Zola, and please take it away. 
Thank you so much. Thank you for this nice presentation. You said it all. I don't have anything to say anymore. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you a lot for this opportunity today. Uh, as we know, it's our final webinar. I have I had the chance to participate uh, to one webinar already, and this is my second. So thank you for the opportunity. I will share my screen for my slides. If you allow me, it would be. So I come from the International Executive School, uh, a new and fresh business school based in France, in Strasbourg, next to Germany. Uh, we are actually, uh, we prepare our uh, we prepare our student individuals to tackle uh, future challenges. We believe a lot into in soft skills. We believe a lot also in uh, in the capabilities of our students, even when they are just coming into the business school. Uh, it's a, a two ladies uh, story. This business school, uh, Zina and Sula, who are actually have been working in hospitality and uh, FMCG field for many years and also have been professors for more than 15 years for Zina and for me 10 years uh, and that's what brought us to the educational industry. Uh, our programs we deliver definitely diplomas, hospitality, spa and wellness, bachelor, MBA, master's, PhD and also short programs that we will be able to talk to you about it later on. Uh, today, the matter is championing, for me, it's uh, the personal branding. Uh, I think after the presentation of Inda, I don't have a lot to say because you have covered it all, but I would, ha I would give uh, an educational point of view about it, if you allow me. Uh, and what I will be talking about is what is branding, why it's crucial, how to develop your own personal branding, and how to communicate it. I would be short on that because the previous presentation covered it. Uh, what is branding? You, you can see here two cups of uh, coffee. You one with the logo, one without the logo. Directly when you see the two pictures, you can in your brain have an association with one, right? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Same for this. You have a bottle of water and you have an avion. So why, when we talk about brand, we talk about value versus commodity. And the same story is also for you when you look for a job. Are you looking for a job title or are you looking for a purpose? And that's what's going to make the difference. And this is where personal branding is going to play a role. It's is where personal branding is going to tell you when to say yes, when to say no, knowing your strengths, knowing your weaknesses. So. As we say, a brand, and it was said before, needs to be clear, needs to be consistent, and needs to be recognized. So you, as a brand, also you need to be recognized. And how to be recognized is uh, through your life experience, through your point of view and actions, how you perceive things. So personal branding is a combination of your image, and your reputation. And uh, thank you for the previous presentation because your reputation is a physical and it's also a digital presentation. It's an online presentation. Up. Yeah. So, uh, we have to ask ourselves, who are the people that are always asked to be on a project teams or take on highly visible projects? why they are consistently asked, what quality do they possess. It's like the cup of Starbucks. When you see the cup of coffee, you associate it with quality, with a certain experience. Also, when you see certain people, you associate them with certain skills and certain capabilities. And this is personal branding. So, how do you control your brand is personal branding. How do you control what is your association, what are you associated with? We call it personal branding. So it's the strategy you develop to guide your brand. In order to do that, you have a process. Uh, the process is firstly, define your persona. Define your persona is define who you are, your attributes, your identity, your vision, and your values. And it's a matter of questions. 
what are my strongest attributes, what am I passionate about, what motivates me, what are my personal values, what excites you. And trust me, it's not easy to answer these questions. It takes time. It takes time and time where you can actually have uh, not only on professional level, but also on personal level, the question should be tackled. So, as I told you, it's knowing your strengths and your weaknesses, and also knowing when you have to say yes and when you have to say no. Uh, ah, excuse me, it's going back. Okay, so dive into your weaknesses is not easy. We have all been asked through the interview, uh, what are your weaknesses? Uh, what are the things that you are afraid of? Uh, when you are overwhelmed with an obstacle, what makes you give up? These questions are important to tackle because you would know what are the kind of uh, uh, competencies or tasks where you know you will not be able to do it as, as good as you are. And this is what Inda was saying something uh, right. It's you don't, don't have to be expert about everything, but you should know where you are excelling at least. Uh, also, you need to understand your values and think about them about as a personal compass. It's like your reference, your road. And your values, when we say curiosity, for example, which is one of my big value, and I will show you later why, it's curiosity about the world. Curiosity can have different meanings. So when you are looking into your values, make sure to have this definition that goes with. Uh, so, when you have defined your attributes, your vision, your identity, uh, your values, you need to validate your perception. So, you also need to know what stimulates you. Uh, you need also to know your passion and you need to integrate your passion into what you are committing to and to what you are doing. Otherwise, it won't be coherent. And if you don't have coherence and consistency, your personal brand doesn't exist. It's the same for any brand we are talking about. So, when you are digging into your passion, also you have questions. What would I do for my vacation, for example, if money wasn't a problem? What are my favorite occupations? What kind of people do I like? What kind of stories in the news always grab my attention? These are the kind of things that would maybe show you the way to your passions. When you have defined that, you go into the second step where you have to define your promise. It refers to your intrinsic value. So what does it mean exactly? What is the benefit of working with me? Why I am a competitive, what is my competitive advantage? Uh, what do you offer, etc. This is your promise. So, what makes me unique? What benefits do people get from working with me? Assist other do, etc. This is where we go to uh, what is my add value. Then, why I'm doing it? It's define your purpose. It's to have an overview, an internal view of what you want to achieve. It's why you are doing that. So this is something very important. So first of all, first step, you know yourself. Second, you know what in what you are different. And third, you show where you want to go. And this is how you build your route for personal branding. After that, you have visualization time. So you write at, in the first person, uh, your story. You write your story in order to know exactly, uh, as we said, who you are, where you want to go. And you uh, design your own uh, personal brand story. Uh, it's a short speech. What we call also, it's the elevator speech. When you meet someone in the elevator and you have only one minute, and you have to tell, to describe yourself. This is what we call also the elevator speech. So it has to be remarkable, solution oriented, blending logic and emotion. Why it's blending logic and emotion? 
Because when we talk about personal branding, we talk about branding, but because we talk also about person. It's an individual. An individual is made of reason and emotions. So it's a blending of logic and emotion. And you have to be genuine. So that's for me. I just want to show you something at the end before I give back to Alessandra. Up. One second. Like you that, uh, One second. Uh, okay. Can you see my uh, Can you see my uh, screen now? There is a CV, right? So, as you can see, for my CV, I have put a quote that is very important to me. Millions saw the apple fall, but Newton asked why. To remi remind people about curiosity, which is one of my very important value. So I integrate my values in my CV in order to show that when I'm looking for a job, I'm not looking for a job title, I'm looking for a purpose. So that was for me. I hope it was interesting for you. And go back to Alessandra. Yeah, I was just about to ask you before you showed that uh, example, what is your one-liner? Can you share with us? So you already did it. Thank you so much. I appreciated the step-by-step -step, uh, sort of uh, structure you gave on how we can actually build this personal branding. And I will be trying it on my own as well. Thank you, Zola. Uh, now we have uh, AJT's very own founder and managing director, Anthony Drutan. He comes uh, with a wealth um, of experience, both in the hospitality industry as well as the healthcare and wellness industry. Uh, so today what he will be doing is to show how he's combined these two, um, as we think, very separate industries into one uh, seamlessly and how this integration has come about through his personal branding. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Well, uh, once again, before I, I, I go into the personal branding of uh, what myself, Anthony, and of course, how I have brought AJT to be its uniqueness uh, business model over the last seven years. So what I'm going to share with you today is something very personal and sharing where we started in AJT and where I am and basically where I started from ground zero uh, from someone who has been in the hotel industry for 20 odd years, maybe 30 years, right? And another 15 years in terms of uh, uh, in the whole business model. So I would like to share this and please bear with me. Uh, uh, I'm not trying to sell myself, but I'm sharing with you my experience. Thanks. Oh, what happened? Just hold on. Let me check. Okay, <laughs> some technical problem. Just give us a second. It's usually a good sign. Good sign. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think the system is a bit too worried about my voice, maybe. <laughs> oh, is the system? Is it okay? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, just give us one minute. You can continue to talk. Yeah. About AJT, and I'll be right back. Okay. Just one second. Yeah. Well. Well, personal branding is always uh, a personal thing. Uh, looking at one how one would basically wants to develop and wants where one want to be. Uh, especially for, for me, I was looking at way back in my younger days when I, I, I was growing in, in, in the hotel industry, uh, someone without a, a, a full comprehensive uh, academic, but I was able to basically brand myself, uh, build many other brands and basically to develop where I want to be and where the brand should be. Okay, here we go. All right, so brand is basically you your image, your vision, your value, your vision. So I believe in every, each and every one of us, in any business that we do, we always look at ourselves in the mirror and we ask ourselves, am I looking good? Am I looking handsome? Am I ready for today's meeting? Uh, what's my mission that I want to prove? What's the values that I want to bring? And where I want to basically develop and, and produce the vision of what I want to deliver, all right? Now, I broke down uh, in terms of my personal branding and making me into three different steps. One, we will look at create your individual identity. Two, to market your personal brand. 
three, reinforce your unique value. So this is where I see personal branding breaks into three segmentation. Now, I like, I like this picture of, of me uh, sitting there, you know, look at how young I was. This I would say uh, 15 years ago, Do I look good. Yeah. But what I like about this picture is the light coming through the door. That light gives me the energy, gives me my passion to tell me I am shining, I'm like a star. So to create your individual identity, I always believe I am who I am. I never, never bother of what others would think, what others would say about what I would like to deliver. Because you are going up on stage, you are going up to deliver your business model, you are going up to deliver your proposal, so you have to be who you are. I am who I am. Never fear in what you do. Fear. When you want to do a business, a business is always that you've got to be upright, be right, be basically yourself to deliver what you need to speak. You could be speaking in a group of 20 people. I believe the first time when I speak my Singapore Mandarin in Guangzhou, I had a stage of a thousand people and that was fear in me, but I managed to overcome that, right? The next thing that I always believe in creating an individual brand is believing in what I do. Believing in what I do, okay? Uh, that is the most important uh, development in terms of one should be doing and one should be believing in what they want to do, all right? Next, driving the passion I have in me. I always believe and I always preach to people, even to people around me, my loved ones, my kids, you know, or business opportunities that I do, I always show them the passion that I have. And I'm a person that I have a passion because I'm an hands on person. I basically work from the ground, I develop, I know, I get the feel, I know where to deliver it, and I know how to make sure the methods are reached to the client expectation or to my business partners. Always in tune with self and families and the societies. Well, these are the stand, these are the people, these are the backbone of where a personal branding is. Without your family, without a loved one, without the society, without the team that builds you in all the above of I am who I am, I don't fear, I believe in what I do, these are the key points. Without all this, of course, when the right opportunity comes, makes the best out of it. And I always take that advantage. Next. Now, by creating uh, your brand, be authentic and personal. And I think this is what I has also shared. Be as authentic, be yourself. I always get people telling me, Anthony, your voice is too loud. But once I make that statement, when people hear my voice, it knows it is me, it is Anthony. So it's not that I'm speaking loud, but it is just me. I am what I am, and that's how I communicate with the heart from the position of authority to attract the growth of people in the target. Imagine if I would be speaking, be authentic and personal. Would someone listen to me? No, right? But if where my voice is, maybe. people, maybe. Eh? In okay. a <laughs> so in a row. So always be yourself. Build your brand from your heart, position, and your strength. Be constant. And this is something that I have been very constant, very much since day one that I developed this company, AJT. Or even I was in the health business or in the hotel business or even in the FMB business and as a CEO or as an entrepreneur. Be constant in where you want to be and what you want to achieve. Don't expect result with investing time or money. You always expect things that may not foresee, but when it comes, it's always a bonus. It's a bonus. So be constant. That's the very key point in terms of looking at one and yourself. Make peace. Okay, so number two, uh, your personal brand. How to market your personal brand? Now, for me, I, I, I differentiate it very much. Me, as a personal brand, it is me, Anthony. Anthony Jutan, I create the value of my brand and that could be me. Now, some people might be thinking to a big MNC corporate, well, if you would brand your company as AJP, which basically represents your name, basically, uh, well, yes, and basically, I don't really tell people that. I brand the company under my name, but I find it easy. I find it easy because the alphabetical order of my name, A, is a basically the first alphabetical when it comes to 
Googling basically to come to search as it's easy. But I brand it because it is easy. I want people to remember. So branding myself, but I differentiate myself, my brand and my product brand, my sub brands. Also my company, the brand is me, the AJT, but I have a product. My product sub brands are two brands that I differentiated very clearly. Dr. Matt, it's a medical applied reverse processes, a medical applied brand that basically does medical, healthcare, concept developing within that circle, within that industry and management. Wellity basically is a brand that fits for wellness, for hospitality. Wellness meets hospitality, bringing wellness into hospitality. And that's where the target audience are hotels, resorts, that I would fit in the fundamental value of my Dr. Map primary medical know-how into wellness and into quality. So I differentiate it very, very clear in terms of the brand, which is AJT and the product brand. So that classified the company a clear direction in terms of where we would like to be and where we want to be. Now, when we talk about market, so when we talk about market, your personal brand, we always need to create relevant, valuable, and education content, right? Where people are interested in consuming content that applies to them, that helps them to resolve the problem. If there's something that you develop and you don't put in the content, the outreach, people might have difficulties in understanding. So create a valuable, the value of what your brand is, sell your brand and not your product. Once you sell your brand, your product comes in automatically. Next, make your content original and distinctive. Don't bother about topics. Don't worry about how you're going to reach there, but make sure your content is original and distinctive. Now's the chance for you to show off your expertise and experience. So when you get a chance, when you get an opportunity, do your utmost, right? So that's the way you, everyone wants to basically show your expertise, your experience in terms of what you can do and what you can achieve for your client and for your objectives and your goal. Now, I, I, I always believe in brand, we need people, we need to work with people, we need to work with organization. I always work with partners and organization that brings me mileage to greater opportunities. So what are the greater opportunities that I have done over AJT over the last seven years? I work with big organization. I build my trust. I build with people that I know that person can bring me further. Yes, at times you might face obstacles, but obstacles, there's always a way around it. So I use this platform of doing participating in conference relevant to build my brand. So I develop strong, fearless of me going on stage to talk about topics that I have to learn, topics that I have to share and educate on consistency of healthcare, medical, wellness, and hospitality. I focus on all these three keynotes when I basically do my speeches or basically when I educate or basically when I also share. So work with partners, organization, network, and bring this knowledge to a greater opportunity. This was one of our very first uh, project that I have in Johor whereby we started our first concept planning in AJT uh, seven years ago. And I remember seven years ago when I started this company, uh, I, I had someone telling me, oh, Anthony, you're going into something very, very raw. It's going to be very difficult for you, you know. I don't think you will make it within one year. But I would like to say we are now here, even in this crisis, we are still standing here, sharing of what I know for the last seven years. And who did I work with? I had the opportunity to do a mixed use development and I had the opportunity to work with one of the top architectural company, Ong and Ong. I think everybody in Singapore or many around Asia would know this architecture company. Ong and Ong was a good company that I could work with to develop a mixed use property in Johor, Malaysia. All right, what's the next things for me to basically announce, build my awareness, build people to look upon me. Uh, I always appear in interviews when there are participation or when there are possibilities 
to come that I can grab on and take advantage of and basically promote. So appearing in interviews are something that is a very strong community base that want to basically promote you by word of mouth. But this is always a great platform to be and you should be. Now, refine. Uh, well, this, this is something very nice. Ladies, can I, can I have you to look at these nice pictures of me, you know? This is something very good that I would like to, to tell you. What is the uniqueness of the value of proposition that AJT has brought in? Yes, AJT has brought in, as Alex has mentioned, because of my combined combination of expertise over the 30 odd years or more. I have brought myself into hospitality and healthcare. And you look at the first picture there for Singaporeans, that was me during the good old days of Goodwood, the Boulevard Hotel, Malaysia Hotel, when I was a, a captain of a restaurant and I was serving our late president, uh, Wee Kim Wee. You know, so someone with totally hospitality and grew my way up in the ladder to become a general manager of a hotel and a property in Singapore and Hong Kong. And from there, I went into medical healthcare. I make sure that I went in, it was vital. Uh, Vital Life, you know, in, in Thailand, looking, being a CEO of a, a, a public listed company owned by a public listed hospital in Thailand, and they are known for it. And I took that opportunity and I built my name for it. I went into anti-aging medicine, which is something totally new, but I went fearless. I went in to educate and learn and I brought myself. And today, where I am in AJT, I brought into entrepreneurship and I won an award for the company by integrating two idealistic model of healthcare, hospitality by integrating conventional medicine, holistic medicine, and we won an award last year for top 50 company in healthcare award. So I never fear, I always reach out for my goal. And this is where I wear a whole lanyard of from hospitality to healthcare. All right, and I predicted this when I started this company in 2013, I saw that opportunity. And I was true enough when 2018, I still keep this article that was out and it saw in La Roche that this opportunity of health and hospitality will be connecting and taking challenge and opportunity. And I was very true at that time, they predicted a 7.6 trillion, today you're talking about the numbers are meeting there and it's climbing even more, all right? Well, looking at all this, in AJT, seven years of experience, we have built many other sub-brands. We have built the brands for our partners. We have built brands to basically make it in my consistency of where we want to be in healthcare and wellness. The brands that you see on the screen are all the brands that we work for and we build it for our partners. Well, last but not least, I just want to tell you, everybody tell me the pandemic is an issue. It's basically tough for everybody. Yes, I would totally agree and it was tough. But I took the advantage and I basically reversed the opportunity of business marketing, like what Heather was saying, reverse marketing. And I took this reverse by creating the bus, creating to bring in the network by creating the AJG webinar series. And that's where I am today. That's where we are today. We took the rivers to promote a fourth going brand of Swan and McCarran, helping them to grow their brand, helping them to bring other speakers to share their knowledge, building the industry network and building others to learn and how to move forward in this crisis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, before we start into the q and I have a lot of questions for all three of you. Mm. Uh, I noticed some Toastmasters uh, club members who have come to support Inda. Mm. Please feel free to drop your questions into the Q&A so we can ask Inda or any one of our speakers directly. Um, perhaps now I can take us to the first question. Uh, we have one from Thomas. Um, yes, yes. Thomas so McCormick. Thomas is asking, how long in your experience, Inda, uh, is it to develop a personal brand image? So in my experience, I would say that it 
very much depends on you. I think it can go very fast depending on how uh, fearless you are, on how much, I mean, on the story you tell yourself. Do you care about what really people think about you, which you should, but it should not slow you down in actually achieving your personal running goal. So it depends on your energy, your fearlessness. It can go very fast. Uh, anything that uh, Zola would like to add to that? If not, I have a question for you, Zola. Um, actually, it's... May I have it up? Okay, no, no worries. So, uh, John Young is asking, the 24-7 street corner delis are quite generic. How do you bring a commoditized business? As you mentioned, you know, commoditized items versus branded items. Yes. Thank you for the question. It's very interesting. Actually, coming back to the example of Starbucks and Evian, both of them, coffee and water, are commodities. When you think about Evian, you don't think about the water only. The water is the less you think about. It's to think about uh, uh, forever, uh, endless youth. Uh, you think about being in shape. You think about happiness. So you associate the commodity with other things that would be actually important for the consumer. Uh, definitely Starbucks is an experience. It's a cozy place where you can have your coffee. It's a safe place where you can work. So it's something else than coffee. So if you want to brand your commodity, you need to know what do you want to share with your consumers? What are the kind of relation you want to create? And that's based also on your proper DNA and your proper values and principles. And it's an association with what can this commodity associate with, with and be perceived as. It's not the commodity itself. And this is the whole job of being a marketeer. And storytelling. Mm. True. Yes, thank you so much. I think that was um, useful. Uh, John, I hope we answered your question. Um, we have quite a few questions coming through that is interesting on the Q&A. However, I have one personal question open to all three of you. So what do you think are the traits of a personal brander? Maybe each of you can name me a few, like the, the characteristics and traits of a person who wants to do personal branding. So for me, personal branding, because it's about connecting with the people and it's about conveying your emotions, you need to project human values, something that everyone would relate to. And some of those human values are empathy, vulnerability. Just be the one who doesn't judge people. Be the one that is not the average. Be the, be the one that, that, can, that can be looked up to. Uh, I always see being your personal brand is always building trust, respect. Uh, we want always to have a win-win situation in uh, personal branding. So before you speak to someone, that person also has his own brand, his characters, his character. You might see people who are very silent. Uh, you might see people who are very silent that you can't read and understand this person. That is his own identity. That is a brand that he's built out himself. But nevertheless, you should not be uh, uh, running across the same person and you, you, you act likewise. But you basically create yourself and, and show your passion in terms of this is where I would like to be and I hope this is where we could meet. So I think in, in building a personal brand is in whatever difficulties that you are facing or any people that you have, it is who you are. And I say, I am what I am and I believe in what I want to do. So build the trust, build the respect. And, and knowing your own, own as your, your own correct. core principles. That's right. Okay. That's right. So love? Uh, I won't be far from what Anthony and Hinda said. I would bring integrity, uh, knowing yourself, being honest about it. And I was mentioning something in my presentation, knowing what you can do and what you can't do. And know and choose your road based on that. Because this is where you will have actually a smooth journey. So integrity and knowing yourself. Great, thank you. Um, Inda, we have a curious uh, attendee here. They're saying, hi Inda, out of curio curiosity, mm. what is your one-liner? Okay, mm. yes, it's a good question. It's a good question because I was, I was asking myself as I heard your one-liner, uh, Sula. Yeah. My, because 
because I, I do different things that are combined together. My one-liners depend on the situation, okay? Mm -hmm. So, for example, at Toastmasters, when I was the club president, my one-liner was that I'm the club leader and I'm the protector of the kingdom, you see? Because the one-liner gives a vision, helps shapes the vision in the people's mind. At Smart of Asia, my one-liner is that I am the human face of the tech, of tech. True. Yeah, so it depends on the situation, yeah. as you mentioned. Yes. As long as you know what your brand is and then you apply it in the different settings. Yeah, but that's a good question because I do believe, I do believe that mm -hmm. every human being uh, should have a one-liner because it's, the one-liner is like a picture you show to somebody. It helps them get you straight away. So I think I would like to ask the same question then to Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think the one-liner is always uh, uh, different, right? Very, very no, different. no, wait, wait. Can I answer? His one-liner, I heard it in the presentation, is be handsome and hands-on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my my, my one-liner basically, it, it, it's basically uh, in terms of personal branding, you you got to basically, to be, which is very true, is being hands-on. One mm -hmm. should know what one is doing. Uh, I think that's a key, very key point. I, I think Inda summed it up for all of us. Um, <laughs> we will take another maybe two more questions. Um, I know we're running, we're running a bit uh, short of time, but thank you everyone for all these questions. Um, I have a one which is um, sort of summed up, our, our participants have summed up what all these is. They were saying that it's quite technical. Uh, some of the steps that were given, which is a good thing for personal branding. Um, and one thing is about self-awareness. How do you build the confidence to forge a hit with your ventures and ensure you don't sell yourself short mm. after all these steps that we already know exist? Anyone? Zola? Zola, you can start. Zola, you can look at this <coughs> question. Uh, can you repeat? Because I didn't hear well, actually. I'm sorry. So, um, so the, the, we have all the technical steps now. Yes. Through this, how do we build our self-confidence to forge ahead in the business ventures to ensure we don't sell ourselves short? Anyone so, else? Uh, actually, first of all, it's, uh, you need to, uh, to work. Uh, the steps I have put in my presentation have to be validated. So when you are looking for your values, for your attributes, etc. You should be checking around you, your friends, your colleagues, if they have the same perception about you. So you need to validate your perception in order to go and put it directly online in public in front of your audience. So this is what I would be suggesting as a first step. Validating and then going. So you don't self sell yourself shortly. But let me tell you one thing. What you do and the way you behave, you cannot cheat about it. You can sometimes say, uh, give a description, but your actions and your behaviors will always be honest. So make sure you are coherent between what you are saying and what you are doing and walk the talk. Perfect. Thank you so much. I think that's clear. That's good. Very clear. Audit. I always believe in auditing yourself. Absolutely. Uh, Anthony, if uh, I may direct a question sure. to you, um, what audience do you believe would get the most value out of your personal brand? Well, I think of my personal brand and what people will get out of this is people are looking for a change. People are looking for something new. People who are looking for something uniquely as we bring uh, a uniqueness of uh, two different industry, uh, which is healthcare. And now healthcare, the word is not just healthcare itself. It has broadened into many other subtitles, complementary medicine, integrative medicine, functional medicine. And this has now grown into one big circle of business by itself. Uh, so people are looking into healthcare and people who are looking into basically wellness and wellness is again, has lots of subsidiary, uh, holistic wellness pours down to many, many other things functional gyms, fitness, lifestyle, uh, uh, fitness, you're looking at even to the extension of senior home. But whatever it is, uh, this tool brings in people who are looking to venture into something new, people who are looking at healthcare, people are looking into wellness and education. So this, I think, will bring the greatest value for people who want to create 
a new dimension. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go back to, to jump in, uh, also to, to contribute to, to Sula, yeah. if that's okay, because sure, the ahead. question that was raised by the mm. anonymous attendee is very important, it's about confidence. Yes. And uh, it's true that we can give you all the steps that we want, but then how do you do it? It all starts with confidence. Mm. And confidence starts with educating yourself first. If you, are, if you think that you are selling yourself short, first of all, it's good that you are aware of this, then go out there and there are some people that will open your eyes. Like for example, there is a marketing guru called Seth Godin. And this person, if you listen to this person, is, is, is all about positive marketing in the world. It's going to help you boost your confidence and direct you through your self introspection. But personal branding is definitely to me, first and foremost, a work of self introspection, just as Sula and Anthony mentioned. The first thing you need to do is look at yourself, really, and you need to build a story that you tell yourself. Uh, Seth Godin said something that I really believe in. He said that every horse is the right horse. <laughs> just get on the goddamn horse. Okay? <laughs> it means you get somewhere. <laughs> yes, just get on the horse. That's it. You are unconfident. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But know your value also. I think. And that's that, that's a great thing. Um, one of the questions was actually related to that. Um, how do introverts do it? Because especially when we see in marketing and networking, and in the I know you on a personal level as well. I've told you sometimes it's just so scary, you know. Yeah. If you're not naturally outgoing and mm. naturally not loud, mm. so I think all these are very useful mm. tips mm. for people who are you know slowly need to build that mm. self confidence. Mm. And from hearing all three of you, I think. One of the takeaways I'm hearing is about self-awareness, letting go of this mm. fear and just mm. getting on that horse, mm. as you say, and try. On any horse. Any, ho any horse. Mm. Donkey? Yeah. Mm. Like, get on the donkey too. <laughs> the donkey will take you to the horse. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, any, any other questions or last words before we wrap up? Because I think we answered most of yep. the participants' yes. questions. Yes. Anything anyone wants to say? Just for personal branding, my, my, my uh, take home message is uh, I always believe in passion uh, and never fear. And the next word is consistency, to be constant in what you do. I think if you are basically having all these three big words up in your mind, uh, mm. you will not go wrong and be yourself. Mm. Mm. So I think never, never worry about uh, whatever is forthcoming, whether uh, it's a new business that people are asking you to participate in. Uh, you might not be good in one strength. Uh, I never close my doors in networking. I never close my door in any business, but I will explore and I will basically take an audit to see how I can, can overcome it and how I can move forward. Yeah. Okay, what I would share that was said today by Sula and Anthony, and I will, I will emphasize on that, is own who you are. Yeah. The people who succeed in personal branding are the different people. The pe is, are the people who own the fact that they are different. Being different might not be easy in every situation because the society is such that we need to conform. But if you want to do personal branding, conforming is not the solution. Zola? I think everything has been said. I won't be uh, repeating uh, because uh, it's I, it's covered it all. And uh, my last thing is, uh, if you want to create your competitive advantage, you need to be different and unique. And being different is you don't be af you shouldn't be afraid of being different. It's uh, don't be different just to be different. Be different based on something you know, yeah. and you need to create the story behind it. That's it. Yeah. Okay, and if I need more coaching lessons, I will come to IES uh -huh. and learn more. <laughs> we would well, welcome, welcome. Okay, We'd um, love to. so thank you all our speakers today. Um, I think it was a great session to wrap up our whole series um, to end up with the marketing and branding. Um, those who have joined us from the very start, I thank you so much for the support, you know, week after week, coming back and, um, you know, engaging in our webinars. It's, it's been such a fruitful experience. Um, let's continue to stay connected because we are in the works of coming up with the next series as well. So as long as you are connected, you can 
stay connected via WhatsApp. Um, we're basically on every single platform as per all the personal branders here today. You need to be consistent. You need to be available on all the different platforms. So we have LinkedIn, Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, our website, mm -hmm. and be confident about mm -hmm. it. Uh, mm -hmm. If you know, if you feel one sort of platform reaches out better, just reach us through that specific platform. Um, besides that, um, I would like to keep in touch and lastly, give me a few minutes because um, all our past speakers, if you're listening, I would like to thank each one of you um, who has so greatly contributed to the success of this webinar. So for our first topic, we had uh, Claire Bostock and Marcus Berthenshaw. Thank you so much. For the hospitality, Kevin Bouvet and Isaac Ng, thank you. And for our wellness development topic, we had Dr. Nam, Barry Warrington, Arthur Napolitano, as well for our Healthy Moms episode, we had Dr. Ted, Master Tan Hak Cheng. I have to say that's the one that Anthony, I remember, really enjoyed on <laughs> uh, Feng, Feng Shui, uh, as well as uh, Miss Rati Wan. Thank you so much. Uh, we also had the topic on retail malls where we collaborated with IES Solar. Thank you for bringing on board Dr. H uh, Mr. Hussein Musa, as well as Kun Min, uh, one of our other partners that we work with. Uh, last week, or was it two weeks ago, we had very um, great panel of speakers, uh, men from the finance industry. We have David Bankert, thank you, Dr. Pansa for his wellness insight and Functional Medicine Insight, as well as Kun Tanwa, as well as Kun Weitibun. Thank you so much. And uh, last but not least, thank you to our main sponsor, Swan and McLaren, our two speakers. If you notice, you saw this man week after week, you know, <laughs> contributing to, to slides and all his uh, creative work. Thank you, Christopher, as well as Terence for all the work that you put in to make this a success. Um, personally, I also would like to thank Anthony awesome. in and out, you know, moderating all the topics. And today he just gave me the last. Uh, and you did well. The last brunt of it. So I am glad well. to be able to the last one. You did well. I'm impressed with you. You see, you, you have <laughs> lost your fear. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? I'm still <laughs> learning guys to this. <laughs> you have lost your fear. Still you learning from the pros. You have lost your fear. So th thank you all and please do look out for our upcoming series. Uh, we will update you. So we have newsletters coming out as well or our social media platforms if that's what suits you. Um, anything else, Anthony? As a yeah, uh, I would like to thank every viewer uh, who are now viewing us or who is on YouTube or will also hear our replay broadcast. I would like to thank you all for giving us this opportunity. Uh, please feel free to write to us at info at ajt.com or you can basically write directly to me at anthony at ajt.com. I personally thank each and every one of you and all our speakers. Uh, thank you, Sola. Thank you, Ida, for all of you today. Uh, Alex and all the past speakers once again and the people behind the scene uh, at AJT, uh, we thank you. Kun Romcha, Kun Chonticha, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much, Sarah, Namtan, and all the whole team behind us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and stay tuned, please. Watch out for our next series. Yes, yes. it will be a very exciting series. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Bye bye. bye.